first thing I have to do is check. Well, actually, I'm going to wait. The first thing I have to do is I have to put a zero over here. I can't have a 24. I'm going to, to make it a zero by subtracting 24. Of course, I have to do the same exact thing to both sides of the equation at the same time. So let's subtract 24 and subtract 24. And what that gives me is b squared plus 5b minus 24 equals 0. Now this is a case where I have a leading coefficient of 1, so I can use my favorite easier method here of factoring. And then what I have to do is take the constant at the end, negative 24, and factor this into factor pairs so I can look for a factor pair that adds up to the middle number. All right, well, let's do that. Um, negative 1 times positive 24, negative 2 times positive 12, negative 3 times positive 8, negative 4 times positive 6. Yeah, and then, and then it flips and starts going back the other way. So also 1 times negative 24, and 2 times negative 12, and 3 times negative 8, and 4 times negative 6. Um, I need two of these that will add up to positive 5, and that's going to be negative 3 plus 8 equals 5. So negative 3 and positive 8 are the numbers I'm going to be using in my factors. So I come up here and I take B squared and I separate it into B and B. And then I take my two numbers. Negative three becomes minus three and positive eight becomes plus eight. Now that was all we did for factoring but the equals zero means I'm going to actually continue on. And so here are some additional steps that you do when you um, are solving a quadratic equation. You factor it, and then you set each factor equal to zero. B minus three equals zero. B plus eight equals zero. Then you solve each of these little equations. Add three to both sides here on the left, and I get B equals positive three and subtract eight from both sides over here on the right, and I'll get B equals negative eight. And then you can check your answers. And how you would do that is how you would normally, let's do one of them, but I really haven't got time right now. Here's the original equation. Um, let's choose negative eight, because it's harder to work with a negative number. Put the negative eight in parentheses and square it. Plus five times negative eight. This is going to be, what? Eight minus three is five. So this should be minus 24. Ah, oh, that's what's wrong, negative 24. No, but this is gonna be positive 24. 
All right, I know that's right. So what am I doing? That's, oh, I know what I'm doing. Never mind. Negative eight, ugh. negative eight squared is positive 64 plus five times negative eight is negative 40 equals 24 equals 24. 64 plus negative 40 is the same thing as 64 minus 40, and that is 24. 24 does equal itself, so that's a true statement. And what that means to me is that negative 8 equals B, it's one of the numbers that equals the variable that this quadratic equation is written in. And I could do the other. Okay, so these are the extra steps you go to when you solve a quadratic equation. Well, that was fun, let's do it some more. Here, I have to have a zero on the right. So I am going to subtract 8w from both sides of the equation. And so I will have w squared minus 8w plus 16 equals Zero. Notice I take the time to write this in descending order. And then there's a one leading coefficient. Don't lose your equals zero. I split apart the W squared into W and W, and then I factor positive 16 into two numbers that add up to negative eight. 1 times 16, 2 times 8, 3, no, but 4 times 4. There you go. But we need the negative version. Negative 1 times negative 16, negative 2 times negative 8, negative 4 times negative 4. And yes, negative 4 plus negative 4 equals negative 8. So I'm going to have w minus 4 and w minus 4. Well, they're the same thing, right? w minus 4 equals 0, w minus 4 equals 0. You know I'll have the same answer for both of them because they're exactly the same equation. So when I add four to both sides of the equation, I get W equals four and W equals four. Now let's talk. Over here, the solutions to my equation were three and negative eight. If you wanna call that normal, it's normal for a quadratic equation to have two solutions, not just one. This is a little unusual. We would say it has one solution it being the quadratic equation. One solution occurring, O-C-C-U-R-I-N-G, occurring twice. So in a way that almost counts as two because it occurs twice. 
So while in the answer box, I would only put four, the fact that it occurs twice is something that we call multiplicity two. Up here, three occurred only once. Negative eight occurred only once. Each of these, each solution has multiplicity one. Multiplicity one. Why is that important? It will be later. I'm just getting you used to the language. There's something else that's going to be very important later, and that is, these are, are what we would call integers, right? They're normal kind of numbers. They're real numbers, more to the point. Um, but integers, since integers can also be written as fractions, they're called real rational solutions to the equation. They're in the real number system. They're rational numbers. They can be made into fractions. And they're solutions to the equation. And there are two of them. Two real rational solutions. And this, this is an integer, so it can be made into a fraction. So fractions and integers are part of what we call the rational number system. So here we have a real rational solution. There's one real rational solution. to this equation. Again, I'm getting you used to this. You're going to you're going to be hearing a lot. You're going to be hearing a lot. Real rational, real irrational, uh, complex conjugate, all of that. Okay, this is just another one. You can do that. Let's do this. This is a little bit different. 27C squared minus 3C. I have to follow the zero principle before I do anything else. So I'm going to subtract 3C from both sides of the equation. And what that gives me is 27C squared minus 3C equals zero. Now here, I have a quadratic binomial, throwing a little um, um, vocab at you because it's necessary or I wouldn't. Each of these terms has a three and a C. 27 is three times nine, times C times C for the C squared, minus three C times one equals zero. And I am going to pull out the GCF, three C, just like with factoring, you pull out your GCF, and then you write the leftovers. 9C minus 1 equals 0. 
Now we're done with the factory. We're going to solve now. So each factor, a factor, here's an example, example of a factor. What about the number six? Six, there's not a six in there, so it has nothing to do with that problem. But six is convenient because it does not appear over there. Six equals one times six and two times three, and then there are the negative ones. One and six are factors of six because when you multiply them together, you get six. And two and three are factors of six, because when you multiply them together, two and three, you get six. When I multiply three C and nine C minus one together, I get 27 C squared minus three C. That makes three C a factor of 27 C squared minus three C. And that makes nine C minus one a factor of 27c squared minus 3c. I set each factor equal to zero. 3c equals zero. 9c minus one equals zero. Cool. I solve for c over here on the left, divide both sides by three, I'll get C equals zero, because if you divide zero by three, you get zero. Over here, this is going to be a little more work to solve. I'm going to add one to both sides of the equation. That'll be nine C equals one. Then I divide by nine and I divide by nine. So I get C equals one ninth. So my solutions to this equation, 27 C squared equals three C are arg. Oh, right. Well, I thought I was on blue. Oh, well, zero and one ninth. These are both real numbers. One ninth is rational. And actually, we did have zero over three. That's a fraction, temporarily. So both of these are real rational solutions of the equation. And this is to know in the near future, very near future. And this is something we need right now. Discussion about this. There might be a temptation to divide both sides by 3C. Don't do it, don't do it. Honor the zero principle first and then pull out a GCF. Okay. Oh boy, we get to do U substitution. I know that because four is two times two. And look at this, we're gonna have one, two, three, four solutions. They're real and rational, but there are four of them. That's because the highest power is four. You're guaranteed to have four solutions if the highest power is four. You're guaranteed to have at most two solutions if the highest power is two. You might have one. You might You're not have any. Me. I'm sorry. You're killing me. I'm sorry. 
<laughs> I'm sorry. There's a lot to learn in college algebra. But anyway, we're going to use u substitution before we do anything else. So u equals x squared. That's the way we always do it. And then u squared equals x squared squared, which is x to the fourth, which means I can rewrite this temporarily as a quadratic equation. So I'll have u squared minus 82u plus 81 equals zero. And you get to learn something new today. Well, you're going to learn a lot. It's not new. OK. Notice that the leading coefficient is 1. So I can just do this. First, I concentrate on factoring. And I want to factor 81 into two numbers that add up to negative 82. And if I write positive 81 as negative 1 times negative 81, then notice that negative 1 plus negative 81 equals negative 82. So you don't always have to make the lists of numbers if you can see it right off the bat. So we're going to have a u and a u and a minus 1 and a minus 81. OK. Now, what does u equal? It equals x squared. u equals x squared. I have a u here and a u here. I don't have any u squareds, which was the whole idea. To factor a quadratic equation is easier than to factor a quartic equation. So now I'm going to have x squared minus 1 times x squared minus 81 equals 0. I'm actually not done factoring, but let's go ahead and set these equal to 0. x squared minus 1 equals 0, x squared minus 81 equals 0, because that's what you do, right? You set each factor equal to 0. But then you might discover, oh my gosh golly, this is the difference of two perfect squares. So x squared minus 1, 1 is 1 times 1, so they're both perfect squares. This is x squared minus 1 squared equals 0. So this factors into x. Well, let me put the, let me do it this way. Separate the x into x and x. Separate 1 squared into 1 and 1. Then put a plus in the middle of the first one and a minus in the middle of the second one, and I have, I don't have room, so we're gonna have to move this over. I don't have room to write my equal zero, so I'm gonna do this. <coughs> okay. Now, the same thing is true for x squared minus 81. 81 equals 9 squared. 
So this is x squared minus 9 squared equals 0. So boom, 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 boom. x squared is x times x. 9 squared is 9 and 9. And I put a plus in front of 1 and a minus in front of the other equals 0. Well, now I set both of these factors equal to zero and solve, and I set both of these factors equal to zero and solve, so I don't need those parentheses now. I will have <clears throat> x plus one equals zero. Whoop, whoop, whoop x plus 1 equals 0, x minus 1 equals 0, x plus 9 equals 0, x minus 9 equals 0. Starting on the left, x plus 1 equals 0. I subtract 1 from both sides. I'll have x equals negative 1. x minus 1 equals 0. I add 1 to both sides. I'll have x equals positive 1. Subtract 9, subtract 9. X equals negative 9. Add 9, add 9. X equals positive 9. And let's just see if this matches. Their answers it does. So, these are all numbers, they're integers, which means they're also rational. These are four, four real rational solutions to the equation. Solu, <laughs> solutions. To the equation and those numbers are negative 1 and positive 1 and negative 9 and positive 9 or you could write them in order as they fall on the number line and you could do that also but let's go over what we did as soon as i see 4 is 2 times 2 i use u substitution it's just a reflex. Ah, uh, use substitution. So I get to rewrite this as um, um, a, a quadratic, and I know how to factor quadratics. If I don't know anything else, I know how to factor quadratics. So I factor the quadratic, and I set each, well, I resubstitute, and then I set each factor equal to zero. I notice that each factor is a difference of squares, perfect squares. So I continue to factor. And then I set each of these factors equal to zero. And I solve each of these four little equations and I get four answers, solutions. And there you go.